the weirdest thing um, about recording with two monitors, and I need to be aware when I start my recording that I will add the fade in and fade out. So when I'm aware of that, I mean, I need to be talking either louder or just softer or about something not as important when I start the video. But what's weird about recording with two monitors is when you go and you look at it in your second monitor afterwards. Um, like when you when you just do a couple tests or when you watch it on your second monitor and not the one you're playing off of, it looks quite different. Like, I bet even if you had the same brand of monitors, I mean, you're not going to have the exact same model unless if you're really going to buy two of the same. I mean, the one I game off of is Asus. And the one that I now edit off of is, is BenQ, and the BenQ one is um, was originally the one I played off of, and then I had this old um, Chinese brand I don't remember. Uh, I, I got it for twenty dollars um, because it was it. I mean, it lasted well. It had a decent resolution. It was between 720p and 1080p. I don't remember exactly where it sat. It consumed a lot of power, but I mean, I live under my parents' roof. Is that my problem? <laughs> I, I don't know. B maybe I should be a little bit concerned about that. But that monitor's gone now. And now I ha I've gone from a monitor that uses 200 watts to... Um, and, and a monitor that uses, like, 45 watts to a monitor that uses 45 watts and a monitor that uses 25 watts. That's the Asus one. And the Asus one, this Asus one that I'm playing off of is the best monitor I've ever played off of. Like, it is amazing. You have no idea. But anyways, I will get into the topic that I have at hand, um, that being uh, balance, I guess, um, balance in, in your life, because really it's something that people don't get, and I mean, I'm not saying I get it, I mean, we all, we all kind of deal with it differently, and I'm not saying that there's any perfect or one way that you deal with it. That's not why I'm doing this. I'm doing this just to talk about how I have tried my best to strive towards that. And, and I mean, it's now the end of July, as you can see. It's July 25th. We're rounding off the end of July um, in this video. And, well, when I'm recording this video. So, like, I'm starting to think, you know, about balance more so. Because I'm even, I'm even struggling to do everything I want to do every day um, when I'm off school and when I'm working and I mean I'm only working I only worked like 12 hours in the past week but um, you know it's gonna get more intensive soon like I'm, I think next week is 31 hours that's gonna be a lot and there's gonna be a lot of evening shifts and I like to go to bed early but the thing is is I can balance that I can go to bed early can still go to bed early um, on the other nights and that's what I'll do is I'll double down on the other nights and I mean yeah hopefully hopefully it doesn't screw up me texting friends too much <laughs> it might but yeah that's another thing right is like since we've been in COVID um, coronavirus era is we haven't necessarily been able to um, see people like we did before. Even now that we're back to kind of being open again in the sense that we can have a large social circle, um, we just can't be in buildings with hundreds or thousands of people anymore. Uh, well, at least now. I mean, that will go back to normal. These, all, these things always go back to normal. They always have historically. Um, and they, they, they will. It, it will. Everything will go back to normal. There's been pandemics before that have crushed the globe. It's it's not a new thing. Um, that's what everybody needs to understand. And really, it has become more difficult to keep up with people for me. Because my school friends, I don't really talk to them every day. Uh, I don't text them every day. I just mostly see them at school at this point. That's where we're at. And that's not a bad thing, right? But now I haven't been able to see them at school. And I don't even really join the Zoom calls because they're an inefficient way for me to learn. So I don't learn that way. Um, yeah. Um, so it's hard to achieve a balance with everybody in your life, but you need to prioritize people in your life. People are, you know, you're not dependent on any one person. 
You shouldn't be, at least. But, um, okay, next game. But you are dependent on other people for what they are for you. And for some reason, Optifine capes aren't working right now. That's really annoying me. I even um, installed the new version because my old Optifine said my Optifine was in critical condition because I haven't updated it for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, like, one thing everybody needs to know is that you need other people. You know, you need... And really, you can find relationships ever, anywhere. Like, the argument that I've heard against homeschooling is that you're not going to have those relationships at school. Well... You get relationships everywhere. You get relationships where you'll work. You'll get relationships whenever you do any activities. You know, art class, whatever, Bible study, whatever it might be. You'll you'll have relationships with people. And that's... Like, we all need that. You don't need that specifically in a school setting. That That's my point with that. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to go onto that tangent. I'm very good at tangents. And, you know, I can have one commentary uh, in TNT Run. And I can come up with so many other topics that I can talk about. And always, you know, feel free to say something in the comments, um, either as a response to something I said, and we can have a, a little bit of a back and forth discussion. That's I'm I'm completely okay with something like that, or suggestions, or even things that are connected to the video that could be used as a suggestion for a future video. Because I do record these um, weeks in advance. That's true but they still can be interactive and they still can communicate with who watches them and you know my mega walls videos are pre-recorded a long time in advance maybe even upwards of a couple years in advance because i just want to get them out because i have them and i should just use them as recordings because i might as well it's good my audience gets something but those aren't as interactive because um, I, they're not new, right? And, yeah, okay. But anyways, you need people, and that's what I've discovered, right? Is when I was in those last couple weeks of school, and I was buried under coursework, because I always like to push myself harder every year. I want to break another record every year. Um, and that's a good thing, because, I mean, I'm growing intellectually. I'm a high school student. I'm high school age, right? Teenagers always like to improve themselves and that's good that's good because we're we're going to be the next generation of adults right and we need to be kind of prepared to take that role um not necessarily we don't necessarily have to improve upon our parents we can be the same as our parents um i don't think i'm entirely an improvement on my parents i don't know why they raised me in certain ways but <laughs> it was besides the point you know like i'm probably going to be a more strict parent but what can I really say about that? Like, I don't know. Um, and since I'm of a conservative Christian background, that's where I'll try to marry as well. Um, so that would probably add to it as well. <laughs> but anyways, balance in life is tricky. <laughs> because when I was under all that schoolwork and all that pressure, and I wasn't, I wasn't talking to any of my online friends, I wasn't even really talking to my school friends, and I was still working hard at school stuff, which is funny, I should be talking to my school friends at least, but I wasn't, so, um, I, yeah, I kind of had a little bit of a, a couple stages of, like, almost depression, like, I wanted to talk to people, right, and, you know, I have online friends or friends that are Christian friends that don't live nearby, they don't go to my church, they might live on the other side of the country or other places in the country, right? And, I mean, I'll get to meet them someday, of course. There's opportunities for that, right? And that's great. But they're the most important people in my life because they're like-minded. You know, I can talk to them about anything. We can joke around. We can, we can be anything, right? Point being. We can be anything that we agree with, um, basically that makes any sense. almost died there. <laughs> almost didn't click the double jump button. Yeah, so, no, I guess the point, the, the thing I'm trying to say is that, like, if you have a lot to get done, you still need people. I mean, I sacrificed it for a while, maybe a week or so. I just didn't talk for a bit. And, 
you know, I don't like that, you know. Sometimes people will make you mad and you'll purposely not talk to them despite them. But, no, I don't suggest you do that because, well, make up with them, right? And I'll talk about, I'll do another video, um, probably the one after this one, about the key to um, having a healthy, wow, he has, a, he has his cape. Hmm. Do I have to activate it again? No, I didn't change my name. Okay, anyways. Because, really, the key to happy, uh, healthy relationships are just... I mean, I kind of sound like a cliche, um, one of those people that come and will speak at your school person, but I'm not. As the way they approach it is very different from the way I approach it, and I wouldn't agree with anything they're saying. Because, really, the key is, be respectful. Just, just be respectful, be nice, and know what puts each other off. You know, you don't need to say certain things. It's the bottom layer. It's not. Okay. This is going to be a long map. Yeah, so just be aware. Be aware of what you're saying and what it, what its effects have. And, you know, when things like that get toxic, you know, that's when there starts to be some breaking apart. I've noticed that um, a lot with people. And, you know, I think maybe, maybe perhaps the way I am in general amplifies it because really if you say something i i disagree with I'm, i'll just say no i'll just say no i can't no you know and it's better than openly just arguing <laughs> but it's also probably not the it's it is casting judgment i mean i don't really think it's it's a bad thing to show what you think because that makes you uncomfortable you should be honest with the person that you're talking to about whatever that maybe we shouldn't be having a relationship over that you know like i see it as this if i have christian friends um of the same christian background as me the same specific lutheran background as me i can be better friends with them than i can be with anybody else because they're more like me you know we'll agree on more things and we can have a much more significant relationship because we agree on so many things right like, if you, if you're just, if you meet somebody at work, and, you know, the only thing you're talking about ever is work, and you don't meet up outside of work, then they're just a work friend. Like, they're just somebody that you, that you bond with at work. But, really, like, could you talk about them, about deep things going on in your life? Could you talk about them with, uh, could you talk to them about theology, or, um, spirituality, or... Um, other things going on in your life like school or family or you know family issues fa friend conflicts just things like that like could you if you think you can then good for you but you probably you probably can't be in that neighborhood with everybody else but yeah anyways I'll go into that with another video <laughs> good job B I have already gone off on a couple tangents I'm talking about balance specifically here and I'm having trouble even getting to that topic. So, you know, balance is important because we all want to do different things in our lives during the day because, well, it'll get boring and it's also not good for us to spend our days doing the same thing every day, right? Like, wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree with that? No. I think I may have actually paused that before I died, but whatever. You know, like... I'm, my trouble with balance is that I want to read my book a fair bit every day because I love to read fiction stories that have Christian themes in them, themes that kind of reinforce what I believe, and um, books that are also suggested by friends, but, you know, I'm, I'm just not as fast of a reader as I want to be, and, you know, that's one way I disappoint my best friend is she keeps trying to recommend me books and I just can't get through them fast enough to please her like when we were reading the, the messenger trilogy together it's a trilogy about a dystopian future where um christian conservative christians are persecuted and there's absolutely no religious freedom for them we don't know about religious freedom for other religions but it's because the topic of the story is from inside the underground church so you know i was i i just had trouble like she didn't want me to be as she, no, she wanted me to be fast, but I couldn't be as fast as she wanted me to. And I just, like, it's not because I had other things going on. It's just because I can't read for that long, or I don't know what it is, really. It's, it's hard to explain. 
Like, reading is important. Do it. Do it. You know, you should do it every day for probably at least half an hour. I don't care how you do it. You read articles on your phone. Read books on your phone. You, like, you read ebooks. You read actual books. You read um, whatever. Even if it's for school related. If you know you're reading like half an hour to an hour a day from for school, then yeah, sure, that counts. But I think recreational reading, like fiction, and even if you like reading nonfiction for fun, um, I like to read theology for fun, and I like to read like Christian fiction for fun, which there isn't much for Christian fiction. Wow, that's a big map still left. So yeah, reading's important to me, um, but I struggle with um, reading at the pace that I want to struggle with. So what I'm trying to get to here is I can't read as much as I want to. You know, I like to work out. Um, without I, I I have I have a workout schedule. I do the Chloe Ting challenge and I work out without equipment. And yeah, it's pretty much gotten me a six pack in just a few weeks. It's pretty amazing. And I plan to sustain it when school's back, even though that's pretty much an hour a day. I also do Duolingo every day. I make sure I continue my daily streak. I do um, Latin and German. Latin just a little bit. German a little bit more. Um, you know, because the German course is bigger and I already know quite a bit of German, so I want to speed run it and get as much out of it as I can, and then just kind of continue the memorization process of restoring my skills on there. So when I go to Germany someday, or when I um, start to read German books um, more so, then I, I'll be able to um, do so quite comfortably, and I will have already kind of learnt everything that I need to know, which will be great. Um, Latin, I'm just learning with one of my friends, and Latin is amazing. Latin's good for brain development. I've already known this. Like, classical education curriculums like to use it because um, it's a regressive subject that needs to come back. And it is coming back because it's good for our brains. And we need to have it um, for that reason. What the heck? And, like... That's why I'm doing it with this friend, but we're also going to try to use it as our secret language because it's really hard for people to pick up. And on Duolingo, the course for it's actually pretty good. So, I, yeah. It's not as it's not as long as the German one, so I won't know as many words, but um, the keys to the course for Latin on there is grammar. So, I mean, you'll get the main things with grammar, and then you'll be able to just do it because you'll know it, and that's... Yeah, so I'll be able to kind of find words. I'll get a Latin dictionary or something, and I'll be able to talk fine, and it'll be it'll be decent. Like I'll be able to have conversations with my friend in Latin eventually. Um, it only will take us 110 days when doing one level of it a day. So pair working out, reading, and Duolingo with a full slate of classes in school, plus a couple extra online classes, and now I also want to do. Wittenberg Academy, a one class per term. They have, they have three terms that I'm going to do. Um, the Festival of St. Michael, um, Christmas, and Easter. So they'll be, so I'll do three German history classes. So I'll be doing three different schools, really, because the online classes are through a different school. Added on top of all of this, and a job. Right? Like, you know, the thing is, is when, you're, when you fill up your schedule so much, the days go by so quickly. And, I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing right? But you need to take your time and live in the moment and enjoy life. Like, this summer was basically ruined because of corona. And it sucks, right? Doesn't it? But what can we do about it? We can't do anything about it. We need to live in the moment. Yes, we lost all of our plans, but there are other ways we can enjoy ourselves. And, you know, I've, I've kind of put the, I've kind of pushed it forward to next year. You know, because, well, my family can't really afford to go to the lake anymore this year. We did we did it for a week. It's a good week. And, you know, I also have a job, so I wouldn't be able to get time off too easily. And, you know, it's fine. Right? Because I've accepted that. But I don't. I can't really enjoy myself very much more than just on a day-by-day -day basis. You know, like I'll go on a bike ride with my friend one afternoon. Like, I'll probably do that with my friend on Monday. I was going to say his name, but I'm like, you know, I'm not going to say people's names anymore. I used to do that quite a lot, but, you know, people will know who they are if they're watching. Some of my friends might watch my videos, some of them don't. Some of them don't know I do it. You know, like, my best friend I have not told because, well, 
I'm almost a little bit ashamed of it. Uh, and to, to her. But it's not... It's just because there's a lot of embarrassment on my channel. And I'm not willing to remove it. Because people can go look back on it and see how I've grown. See how I've changed. Right? Like, isn't that kind of beautiful in a way? Like, Majestic Walrus. He deletes his videos when he says some... When he, um, in the future, disagrees with something he said. Why would you do that? Like, shouldn't you just show everything that made, made you what you are? Like, that's how I see it. Is You should just be who you are. And that's when I'll mention people is like that. But I won't mention friends. Um, because friends are friends. I've never really talked to Majestic Walrus directly before. And I don't think he'd care to talk to me, so... No, so I guess to, I'm gonna try to end this video off now, because we're already approaching 20 minutes, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, actually, no, we're on 20 minutes. We're almost 21 minutes. So, yeah, I, pol I apologize, but I think it's I think it's an important thing to talk about. And I think this has actually been a very fulfilling commentary, despite not being very well focused. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just... Uh... I don't know how I'm going to balance all these things, and I'm also going to start doing organ lessons soon, because I would like to be my church's organist someday, um, and because, well, really, nobody takes organ anymore, so we're, we have a shortage of organists, but I also like organ more than piano. I always have. It's just, there's something about it. It's amazing. <laughs> no, I don't know why somebody, like, somebody in a liturgical church should like an organ more than a piano, even though my best friend does not. Just, um... I need to find a way to convince her to like it more, but, you know, she uses her mom also to justify her. Yeah, he fell. Great. <laughs> yeah, so, I, like, you just need to find a way to distribute your time properly. Like, really, like, when I have to do organ lessons, I'm going to have Monday as an off day. I can't be scheduled for work on Monday. And I'll just have organ lessons every Monday and then the Bible studies in the evening. But there is one problem with that. Um, this will be after um, September, the first weekend in September. That, that's what will happen. Is I'll, I won't be able to work that day. I'll have Bible study in the evening and I'll do organ lessons right after school. Um, but the problem is that I'll have to pack a lunch for school if I'm back fully. I don't think I'll be back fully, but you know, ho hopefully I'll be back fully by second semester and that we can have a normal graduation. That would be perfect. I, I really hope I do. I, I hope and pray I do. And, yeah, so, like, the thing with that is I'll have to pack a lunch for school and a supper. Because it's on the same side of the city. The organ lesson, the organ teacher lives near the church. So, I, I there's no point in me driving 20 minutes back and then 20 minutes there for, for eating. So... I'll have to bring a lunch and a supper, and I won't I won't stop at home during the day. So, that sucks, doesn't it? But, you know, it's only one day a week, and I know people in the area. Maybe I can eat with them. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I could just eat at their house anyways. That's, that's what I was kind of alluding to. Yeah, so... You know, just try to have a good balance with everything. It's important to eat well, as well. You know, you eat well, you and sleep is important. You know, even if you want to get, even if you dis, even if you failed your goals for the day, and you failed what your mental map says that you need to do for the day, just get sleep. You know, teenagers need ten hours of sleep a day. There's no, there's no denying that. Every night, I mean. You know, and nobody ever does that. Like I'm the only one that doesn't really get around it. Like my my best friend cares about that too. And, you know, she struggles with balance, and she struggles with motivation, and I really, I, I've, I know I've helped, but I also can't, right? I can only help so much. <laughs> Gotta finish her, this person. So, I try my best, of course. But, you know, you can only really help so someone so much. And they understand that as well. You know, if somebody's honest with you, and somebody, like, the reason why she specifically is my best friend is because we have an honest relationship. And we're honest about our weaknesses and our strengths. 
And what makes us us? Wow. I'm surprised that didn't... Um, toggle. I mean, activate earlier. So, yeah, I'll talk about that more so in the next video. I'm not too sure um, how much I'll talk about that because it is personal, of course. Um, but I've learned a lot in the last year, specifically. Because, well, I'll talk about that, too. Um, yeah, so... You just really have to try to prioritize what's important to you. Sleep is important to you. Eating as healthy as you can is important to you. And, you know, what's more important to you? School or your workout schedule? Well, school can't just take over your life. You know, unless if you have arranged it this way, then you prioritize it. But if you just have a normal in-class slate in school, it should not be taking over your life, even if you're in university. I don't care what you're taking. It should scale. It would be more difficult, but it shouldn't take more time. That's the point. You know, so, um, let me know if you, if any of you have trouble with this, and thanks for watching if you've made it all the way to the end, because, yeah, 26 minutes. I hope you enjoyed, and, yeah, see you in the next one.